Welcome back. Today I'm going to talk about section 3.2 and 3.3, graphing linear equations. We're going to graph linear equations in two variables. Okay? We know we have a linear equation when the exponent on each variable is 1. And of course the graph of a linear equation will be a line. So here are some examples of linear equations in two variables. 2x plus 3y equals 7, y equals 3x minus 4, x equals 2, and y equals negative 8. Now I know x equals 2 and y equals negative 8. Those only have one variable in them, um, but those are the graphs of those are going to be a line. Okay? And the exponent on each of these, of course, on x and y, our variables is 1. Okay, so we see here the 1 is implied. Now these two over here, these are not linear equations. 2x cubed minus 4y squared equals 6, and the square root of x equals 12. The exponent isn't 1 on our variables. Those are not going to be linear. Those are going to be curves in, in some way, shape, or form. Okay, so standard form of a linear equation follows the format ax plus by equals c, where a, b, and c must be integers, and a must be positive. So b could be negative, c could be negative, but a has got to be positive. So 2x plus 3y equals 7, that is in standard form. That equation is in standard form. Another example of something in standard form might include, um, you know, 3x minus 4y equals negative 12. Okay, negative 4 and negative 12, those are integers. That's fine that they're negative. And 3 is an integer and it's positive, so that's fine. So we have here a is 3, b is negative 4, and c is negative 12. So this equation meets the requirements of standard form. When we graph a linear equation, generally there's going to be an x and a y intercept. And the x and y intercepts for a line will be the location in which our graph or our line intercepts the x-axis or it intercepts the y-axis. So if I've got a line and pretend that line goes through those points. Okay, so there we have our x-intercept, and here we have our y-intercept. Okay, so the x and y-intercepts where the line touches or intercepts the x-axis and where it intercepts the y-axis. Um, it's possible for something to pass through the x-axis and not never touch the y-axis, Look, and also we could have a horizontal line that hits the y-axis, so it has a y-intercept but does not have an x-intercept. Okay, so to calculate the x-intercept, and we're going to do this quite often, and we'll do it with things that are not linear later on, but with lines to calculate the x-intercept, well, we see here we've got our x-intercept, and it could be anywhere along this line. Well, what's y? What's our y value for any of these points on the x-axis? Well, y is equal to 0. So whenever we want to calculate the x-intercept, we set y equal to 0. So the x-intercept will always be some ordered pair that's something 0. And we can put 0 right into our equation and solve uh, in the equation for y and solve for x. In the same manner, the y-intercept is where our graph hits the y-axis. Now, there's all sorts of points along the y-axis, but when we're on the y-axis, of course, what's our value for x? Well, our value for x is 0. So when we calculate the y-intercept, we set x equal to 0, substitute 0 into our equation for x, 
and then we solve for y. And the y-intercepts and the x-intercept, we will always write those intercepts as the ordered pair. For the y-intercept, 0 something. For the x-intercept, something 0. Okay. Now, we don't have to necessarily have a linear equation to have x and y-intercepts. And some will have more than one. Here's a function that has three x-intercepts and one y-intercept. So it has an intercept here, whatever these particular ordered pairs are, and it's got a y-intercept there. So we could have a graph uh, that looks something like this. And it has two y-intercepts. Our orange line has a two y-intercepts and one x-intercept. Okay, so it's just where our, our graph crosses the, the particular axis. Now for lines, um, generally for a line, we'll only need a couple of points to graph a linear equation. Uh, in geometry, you'll learn that any two points make up a line. So when we graph our linear equations, the best place to start is with the x and y intercepts by setting y equal to 0 and x equal to 0 and solving. So some examples. We want to graph the following. Now we could do a table of values uh, like we did earlier. Okay, and you probably did this in grade school. You, you know, you've got your table of values, you have an x, you have a y, and you might try one. Put 1 in for x and solve for y. You put 2 in for x. You might put negative 1 in. You might put 0 in. Okay. Well, we're going to try and do this the easy way. We're going to find the y-intercept. We're going to find the x-intercept and graph. So we want to find the y-intercept. We set x equal to 0. That simply becomes 0 plus 3y equals 6. We divide by 3. And sure enough, we get y equals 2. So our y-intercept is at the ordered pair 0 on the x, 2 for y. We can go ahead and plot that on our, on our graph. Now the x-intercept, in the same manner, we can do that. Uh, yeah, solving for the x-intercept, we set y equal to 0. We get x plus 3 times 0 equals 6. So the 0, this term really is going to drop out. The algebra is simple. We get x equals 6. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there's our other point. And then we graph our line. And our line has arrows on it to imply that it extends infinitely in both directions. So there's the graph of our equation x plus 3y equals 6. And actually what we have here is we have an infinite number of solutions. Any single point x and y on this line will satisfy that equation. So there's an infinite number of ordered pairs on the line that satisfy this. There's also an infinite number of ordered pairs that don't, right? like down here at 2, negative 1, that's not going to satisfy that equation because it's not on that line. Let's look at sample number 2. We want to find the y-intercept. So we set x equal to 0. So that simply becomes 0 plus 4y equals 8. And we solve for y. And we get y equals 2. Well, how about that? The y-intercept is 2 for both of those. Coincidence. The x-intercept, do the same thing. Set y equal to 0. And we ended up with negative 2x plus 0 equals 8. Solving for x, we get x equals negative 4. So we have two points, 0, 2. And negative 4, 0. So 0 on the x, 2 on the y. 
negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 are two points. We connect them with as straight a line as we can draw. And there's the graph of our equation. Now we can, if we want to, find other points. We could use a table of values, put 1 in for x or 2 in for x, and see what that value is. But we don't necessarily need to do that if we've got two good points. Let's go on to uh, another sample problem, sample 3, y equals 2x. We'll find our x-intercept, our x-intercept. So we set y equal to 0. Well, 0 equals 2x. You can eyeball that, I hope. And we get 0, 0. And the y-intercept, well, if we're paying attention, okay, put 0 in for x and solve for y, well, that's going to be the same point. So now I run into a little bit of trouble because my graph goes through the origin. That's both my x and my y-intercept. So now we do have to use a table of values. Um, so we can pick a point, okay, pick an x, so maybe 2. So if we put 2 in for x, we get y equals 2 times 2 and y equals 4. So we have the ordered pair 2 on the x, 4 on the y, oh, that's way up there. So maybe I should choose negative 2. And we get y equals 2 times negative 2. Of course, that's y equals negative 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So when x is negative 2, y is 4. And now I have three points. And I can draw a nice graph of my linear equation. And now I know that any ordered pair that's on that line will satisfy this equation. And y equals negative 1 half x plus 4. We'll do our last sample problem. Our x-intercept, well, let's do our y-intercept first. Let's put 0 in for x and solve for y. So our negative 1 half is just going to drop out, and we get y is 4. x-intercept might be a little more challenging. Graph that point right there. Okay. Now the x-intercept, we set y equal to 0, so we get 0 equals negative 1 half x plus 4. We subtract 4 from both sides, and we get negative 4 equals negative 1 half x. Multiply both sides by, multiply by negative 2, and we get 8 equals x. So when y is 0, x is 8. Um, and I'm going to change my scale here. I think I'm running out of room. So my x-axis, I'm going to count by 2s. My y-axis, I'm going to count by 2s for each grid. So that makes this my new intercept. I can get rid of that one. And so that's 2, 4, 6, and 8. And there's my x-axis, and my graph. So compare the graphs in 3 and 4. What are some of the differences? Well, this particular graph is going down and to the right, this one going up and to the left. Graph number 3 has um, an x and y intercept that at the origin. Graph number 4 has a y and an x-intercept uh, that are actually on the, well, they're both on the axis, but are, are not through the origin, so they have separate x and y intercepts. So those are some of the, the differences in those. And finally, we can graph these two. They are in standard form. x equals 3. Well, x is always 3, so that means no matter what y is, x is always 3. So, of course, my x-intercept is 3. But also, when x is 3, y is 1. 
x is 3, y is 2. Remember, x is always 3. So it doesn't matter what y is, x will always be 3. So we have this vertical line, like kind of vertical, we have this vertical line that x is always 3. So y equals to negative 2. We want to graph y equals negative 2. Well, that's y is always negative 2. When is y negative 2? All the time. So if x is 4, y is negative 2. Is if x is negative 100, y is negative 2. If x is 0, y is negative 2. So it doesn't matter what my x is, y will always be negative 2. So when you see these and you get a little confused, think x equals, well that means x is always 3. y equals negative 2, y is always negative 2. So that is the information on graphing linear equations, section 3.2 and 3.3. We've graphed vertical and horizontal lines. Uh, we've graphed the lines finding the x and y intercept and compared them. We've done that a couple of times. Okay, we've talked about what the x and y intercepts are, and they're not just for lines, they're also for curves uh, as well. And then we talked a little bit about standard form and solving linear equations in two variables. So I will see you in class.